was Ted Bundy's little brother. We were more than just brothers, you know, we were close friends. You know, I really look forward to spending time with him, which I did a lot of. Spent weekends with him and uh, summer vacations from school. I'd go live with him for most of the summer vacation. He was living in Seattle and he'd have me come up there, spend the weekend a couple of times a month. You know, we'd go over and pick up Liz and, and Molly and, and get the raft out. And it would just be seen like a really healthy, okay, I got the basket. Okay, do 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 you know, here we go. Like the Wally and the Beaver, you know, that's an analogy some people won't understand, but uh, we're really close. You loved him. I did love him. Ted just adored Richard, always wanted to take him places and do things with him. We would frequently go, me and Ted and Molly and Richard, and we'd go raft down certain rivers. And so it was a lot of fun, and we, we did a lot of rafting. I know that Richard looked up to him and kind of held him in awe. You know, the kind of thing a boy of 12 years old just automatically thinks like, oh, hey, that, that person's really awesome and got it together. I'm, I'm going to follow what they say. It's like, you can do no wrong. So, yeah. I do have pretty good recollection. I was probably nine or 10, uh, visiting with him in Utah. You know, he was going to law school and he had sent me home early. I was really upset with him because it was out of the blue. Said in a way that, you know, like, that's got something really important to do, or really, yeah, things are really tough right now. And uh, so I dropped it, you know, I, I figured, well, I mean, it didn't matter what, what it was, it just upset me that, you know, shoot, man, I was having a good time here with you, you know. I remember when we were at the airport waiting to get on the plane, we were standing by ourselves over by a window, and, and I looked over at him, and he had this look on his face, he was looking one direction, and I was looking at his profile and the side of him, you know. And I don't think he saw me looking at him because he, I, I could see this look on his face that he was horrified and disgusted about something. There was never any time that he'd ever changed plans on me like that, so extremely. I think that he felt his urge was coming on, knew he was about to go murder somebody, and he had enough responsible attitude to get me out of the picture so I wouldn't be in, you know, involved with it. you remember that camping trip with your brother? Well, there's several camping trips like that. I looked to be about nine or 10, maybe eight, right? On one hand, I, I'm curious about where it is. And, you know, I, I must admit, right now thinking about it, seeing this, on, on the other hand, I, I could care less. Kind of sucks to have to say it, but I wouldn't, I really wouldn't want this picture. There, there's no joy in it. Absolutely none. There was then, but not now. You know, he could do a, a million of these, but it doesn't outweigh one, just, just one of the victims, you know. One of those people, it only takes one person that he killed to be makes it all just go to shit, you know. Yeah, you know, I was a teenager when he was arrested, and I didn't really see the escaping as, as him being full on guilty. Because, you know, he knew I was a kid. I was just being stupid and naive, you know. I was, I was thinking, like like the uh, the fugitive story. Richard Kimball ran away to find the real killer. You know, probably what I was thinking. And at the same time, I was, a part of me was just blocking out going, dude, whatever it is, you can't do nothing about it. Don't let it ruin your life. You know, there's a part of me trying to protect myself from all the pain by just saying, man, just go outside and ride your skateboard. Fuck him, you know? If he's guilty, then let's 
scumbag gets what he gets, you know. Come on into my abode, my home. Some things make me really depressed in a uh, almost a debilitating way where I I will sit in this chair for days. I'll sometimes stay in this camper for two, three days at a time. I don't know. I'm not really afraid of not having a normal life. I've gotten used to life being kind of a bit of a... You have to kind of uh, Jimmy rig your way through life sometimes. I don't recommend it to everyone to live your life precariously, but if I know I have enough to keep shelter and food for my cat and I, that's the most important.